Welcome to a very special episode of Books in the Freezer. This is Stephanie. And this is Rachel. I'm back, at least for today. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I kicked Devin to the curb. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we were able to get you away from that baby for a little bit. Yeah, he's currently snoozing, so as long as he stays reasonably quiet because no one wants to hear a screaming baby in their ear, we are going to be chatting about books, horror books, and just a little bit of a catch-up because it's been too long, and I was telling you before we started recording that I almost feel a little out of touch because it's been so long since I've done this setup that I was like, how do I get Skype working? How do I get everything (laughs) turned on? I was like, oh my goodness. So feeling a little rusty. So it's good to use my brain in a different capacity for a little while. And I was really looking forward to this. Nice. I have been looking forward to it too. So this is the part where you tell me how much you have missed me and how things haven't been the same and get into all that good flattery. You already know that. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, I'm digging here. No, if anything, it's been actually really fun and a weird experience to be a listener for the podcast. And I remember, you know, being in the hospital and like putting on my headphones and listening to episodes and like you and Devin talking. So it's been a lot of fun to be on the outside and not necessarily know what you're going to be recommending and all that. And I think you guys have done a really good job of being vocal online, but... I think you guys have pretty good banter. If anything, I'm like, oh, they've like properly replaced me. It almost hurts that Devin's doing such a good job. <laughs> no, we could never replace you. Don't oh. even say that. And also, you are hardcore <laughs> for listening to us at the hospital. Uh, you know me. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm going to listen to something, it's going to be books in the freezer or something horror related. Is it like, remember on that episode of The Office where Pam's going into labor and she needs her iPod? And Jim says he can, she can just use his. And she's like, my baby will not be coming into this world to M&M's lose yourself. Oh, yes. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. No, we definitely had a moment where I was in the hospital and I sent Jesse home, which I should mention is in a different city than where the hospital is. And he had to go and get all of my books. So I was sitting in the hospital room reading several books. Some of them weren't horror, but I remember had like Jack Ketchum on my nightstand. I was like, this might be a little dark right now. It was the girl next door. And that one, I admit, I did get to the point. I was like, might read this book later. I'm not quite up for it today. (laughs) Yeah, that's one I've been putting off. It's supposed to be so dark. I mean, the fact that it's based off a true story is just terrifying and yeah, very dark, like you said. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I definitely need to be in a certain frame of mind to handle that. Oh, I'm with you. I think for the record, we can get away with reading other books. There's so many other books I haven't read right now that I'm like, oh, I'll put that one on the back burner. (laughs) That's a later Rachel book. So we've been reading a lot of horror this year. Well, I guess, yeah, we haven't really talked in 2019 on the podcast. Yeah. No, we haven't. So it's actually good to catch up. We've messaged, but honestly, it's been a while since we've really talked like this. So I actually don't know what you've been reading outside of the podcast. Uh, For myself, I've definitely been reading horror. And it has been different to read horror without trying to always put it into categories for the podcast, which I'm sure you can relate to because you're still doing that every week. But I read a book and I don't necessarily have to think, hmm, is this a possession story? Would this fit with this episode topic? And so it is a little bit liberating just kind of reading what I want. And yeah, I've definitely been reading a lot of horror. Probably the one of the biggest surprises this year is I've started reading a lot of Stephen King mm-hmm. or a lot of Stephen King for me because we've kind of alluded to it that I wasn't the biggest Stephen King fan when we started the podcast. I'd only read a couple books and they just didn't work really well for me. But I started to find the ones that do, which is really nice because I think, you know, he's such a beloved author that... I wanted to know what all the hype was about. And so I read Pet Cemetery this year and loved it. The audiobook narration by Michael C. Hall, who is Dexter, mm-hmm. is so good. I know you read that. Did you listen to it as an audiobook yes, too? Yes, I did. I was specifically waiting for that audiobook to come out. <laughs> I'm like, that is how I want to experience this story. It is so good. I think a lot of people are going to have it on their favorites list this year because I know quite a few people who read it and just loved it. I definitely think it's going to make my favorites list if that's not a spoiler, but I just thought it was great. And so since then, I've been checking out other ones. I know a Patreon listener, Laura, has been recommending Misery by him for quite a while, and I finally got around to reading that. Of course, no surprise, it totally worked for me because it's basically about 
an obsessive woman who kidnaps a guy. I'm like, yeah, there's your word. I know, like that is like my buzzword. You tell me that someone is kidnapped and I want to read it because that's just like my fun books. So that one was a no brainer and I loved it. So really enjoyed that one. I just finished The Running Man, which is more dystopian, but I'm finding that, especially if I listen to audiobooks, that Stephen King just is starting to work better for me. I'm starting to... I guess not necessarily read all of his books, but pick out the ones that actually are going to be up my alley. And I can see why people like him so much just because it's such a range that I would almost challenge anyone to say, even if they don't like Stephen King, how many of his books have you read? Because like me, I'd only read like honestly Carrie and It, which I know someone's going to be crying that I didn't like those books too much. But he has such a range of work that something is going to work for you. At least that was the case for me. So that's been probably one of the bigger surprises this year. That's funny because I've had a similar experience. (laughs) I feel like when we started the podcast, both of us said like, "Mm, I don't know how I feel about Stephen King. (laughs) But yeah, I've read a few books this year that, you know, I finished them and I put them down and I think, okay, I get it. I get it now. Which ones were you reading? I loved Gerald's Game, which was such a surprise for me. Like I really loved it yeah I was surprised how much you liked it that one wasn't what I expected for whatever reason I was convinced it was realistic horror and then it got really weird really fast and I think I'm here for like really weird and I'm also here for like characters exploring their psyche and trauma so I loved that one and I think I didn't like the real parts as much and I'm like no let's spend more time in this fantasy land actually that's hilarious (laughs) So yeah, I absolutely love that one. Like, I think that's on my top for him right now. That's awesome. Maybe I'll give it another go because part of it was just my expectations going into it were way off and I wasn't in the mood for what it was. So yeah, I think you definitely need to be knowing what to expect. And then with him, I've just learned to DNF stuff if it's just not working for me. Like I DNF to do my key. Well, I asked in the Voxer, Patreon Voxer group if it was worth it. I don't think anyone told you to keep going, did they? No. Well, I, he has like certain avenues he goes into. And I think when he tends to go into this more fantasy thing, I'm not into it, which I know I just said I loved that part of Gerald's game. But I did not like Insomnia and Duma Key seemed like it was throwing a similar vibe. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Like probably what I like so much about books like Misery and Pet Cemetery and even The Running Man is that they all felt really realistic and possible. And a lot of the horror came from real situations so Mm -hmm. I definitely think that's been my flavor when it comes to Stephen King I'm not sure if like the Dark Tower series is going to work for me I do dabble in a bit of fantasy outside of the horror genre but we'll have to see it's on the read later list for sure I don't know the co-worker I had that loved Stephen King said her two favorites were Insomnia and the Dark Tower series and I hated Insomnia so I'm not sure. I'm like, are they the same kind of vibe? Because I can't. (laughs) And they seem super fantasy centric. And I just don't know that I can deal with like an epic fantasy series. Yeah, my understanding is that they're actually related because I know there's the whole interconnection between a lot of his stories. And so you're pretty much supposed to read Insomnia after Dark Towers because there's little nuggets for the two books in there. So That's what I've heard, at least. So it's definitely similar. I didn't have someone guiding me to like what order to read them. Yeah. No, I'm the same. I'm just like, oh, this audiobook is available in my library. That's what I'm going to read, regardless of publication order, anything like that. It's usually my biggest deciding factor. I feel you. That has been a surprise for both of us. Well, you said you think Pet Cemetery is going to be on your best. Do you have any other sneak peeks to something that's going to be on your best of at the end of the year? Well, for talking horror, the other one that is going to make the list, because I gave it five stars, is a horror novella. But I, I'm a little cautious to call it straight up horror because it's almost horror adjacent. And that is Under the Skin by Michael Faber, which is more literary horror, yeah. literary speculative fiction. I don't know if you saw my gushing review online, but I really liked it. And that kind of goes back to my reading this year that I'm starting to get a little bit more into literary fiction, which is not my thing. This blew my mind, especially this year. I assume because I'm so sleep deprived right now, all I thought I would want to read this year would be 
really pulpy genre fiction, you know, young adult and just easier to consume stories. But now that at least he's sleeping a little bit better through the night, I have started really liking literary stories and I don't want to get too much into Under the Skin if people aren't familiar. The general synopsis of that one is that there is a woman who picks up hitchhikers and takes them for some nefarious purposes and that's all you really know going into it and it definitely sounds like a fun Rachel book you know again like kidnapping story surprise surprise but it's not what you think it's very speculative and I just loved it so that was a huge surprise for me I also really liked a story called uh, Stirring the Sheets by Chad Lutsky. Mm-hmm. And I think you've read that one. Is that right? Yeah, I read that at the beginning of this year and really liked it. So I think that one's going to make my list. I just thought it was so good. And it's everything I wouldn't expect to like so much because it's more on the literary side and it's also very emotional. Mm-hmm. And I've said before, like, I have a black soul, I think. Like, <laughs> I like my emotions on the side. I don't want to hear about your family drama in my horror book. That hurts my heart to hear that sentence, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I do not typically enjoy, like, when horror stories try to, like, push in this whole like emotional agenda it just doesn't work for me I'm like forget it cut it out but I think that's changing because that little novella I think it's just over 100 pages during the sheets gave me such an emotional punch and it was poignant and bittersweet and I just loved it like I read it so slowly not because it was slow paced but because I just wanted to savor it and Like I said, that is not me. Like if you were talking to me last year, which you were, like we had completely different conversations where I would have called that book slow and boring and used all my polite ways of describing it when I was reviewing (laughs) it to basically mean that I thought it would be too slow paced for me. But I don't know what's happening this year. I feel like I'm maturing as a reader. So that's happening. Although I'm still 100% up for slashers. I don't want anyone to worry that I'm going to stop loving all the ridiculous books that I've recommended on the podcast. I love all of them still and still read that stuff. So don't worry. Good to know. Yeah, I can't believe you decided you like literary stuff. I feel like that was always our big dividing line. <laughs> exactly. I always said that we couldn't make the podcast too literary because you lost me along the way. I saw that you recently hauled the Rust Maidens. I think you're going to be in a good mindset for it. Oh, that's good to know. Like literary and a little melancholy. Oh, yeah. Like, who am I? Like, that is not my buzzwords, but I'll probably really like it then. Like, there you go. Well, those are a couple for me. How about you? What's coming up for your top books of the year? Are you started kind of mentally making that list? I have. Well, in a book that's not really horror, but that I loved so much, and I know it's going to be on my top 10 is The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock, which is, I think it's fairly horrific. It's Southern Gothic. I've read that. I remember I said it was too slow paced and literary. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Well, I absolutely loved it. And they're making, um, I think it's going to be a Netflix movie or a mini series. They're filming it right now. But the cast seems really good. Uh, Tom Holland is going to be in it. Robert Pattinson and like Chris Evans, I think. That sounds really good. But wait, isn't that the guy from Twilight? He has evolved beyond that, Rachel. (laughs) But yes. (laughs) (laughs) So that's a yes. Don't you dare like curse the name of Cedric Diggory right now. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, I liked him in that. (laughs) Um, yeah, but he's going to be playing kind of a, a character I didn't care for. So I'm interested to see his range, see how he, he goes about that. Yeah, that could actually be really good. I'd watch the show for sure. I would prob- I should I should probably reread that book just because it's so different now what I'm enjoying. So maybe I'd end up liking it a lot more. I just think it was made for me. It was very dark. And I have a soft spot for like short story novels or stories told in vignettes or pieces like that or I guess like different points of view coming together but it has to be done well when it's multiple POVs but this was kind of like five different stories that we kept visiting and then they all kind of came together well that sounds really good as far as horror I really liked mongrels and like looking at what people thought in the books in the freezer book club that wasn't a super popular opinion but I like really liked it again you know vignettes you know short stories 
strung together into a novel with like an emotional literary aspect of course you know made for me yeah that one didn't work as well for me (laughs) well like a lot of people I think there was like a handful of people that really liked it in the group yeah it probably wasn't the most popular choice you guys have had well I think we had a lot of participation in it though because it was um widely published so I think people were able to get it at the library it was one of our more like accessible books we've done yeah that's fair and so we had a lot of people come in and check it out I know I listen to it on audiobook because Hoopla has it I would go back and forth between my physical copy and Hoopla oh but in a change of events you are not going to recognize me I've gotten a little more into urban fantasy and like fairy tale retellings yeah let's talk about that (laughs) because I'm pretty sure you were not into that last time we talked I'm pretty sure I have a video on my YouTube channel where I talk about things I don't like and I mention those two specific (laughs) subgenres We're both having personality crisis, I'm pretty sure. So what are you enjoying in the urban fantasy world? Um, Well, I'm really loving the Wayward Children series by Shannon McGuire. I don't know how this happened, but I absolutely love them. And this last one that, not I guess last one that came out, but I read In an Absent Dream, which is the fourth one, was amazing. I think it's my favorite in the series. Yeah, well, it fits with what you like. I mean, they're kind of short, almost vignette style very character focused that's true so that's how they get me um i've also really enjoyed the miriam black series by chuck wendig yeah that one i haven't read but um where she has the power to see how people are gonna die when she touches them i think i also have like a a soft spot for like main characters who are like rough around the edges and like foul mouthed (laughs) (laughs) and uh the christina henry books where she does dark spins on uh she takes ugh. and the christina henry books where she does like fairy tales or classic stories and does a dark retelling like she did alice in wonderland uh alice and peter pan with lost boy like i really liked those really yeah like i said who am i <laughs> yeah i would have never recommended those to you i haven't read them myself but yeah i really don't know who you are anymore you've changed <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, man. So maybe swerving to a negative note, do you have any disappointing books this year? Yes. You might even know what I'm going to talk about. I don't think I do. Okay. I decided that I needed to fill in some blanks because we've talked about it before. I really didn't read horror as a young adult like I read a lot of mysteries thrillers all that so I was like you know what I should go back and read some of these I've heard great things about Lois Duncan and she has some pretty popular ones I should check them out so I decided to read so I decided to read I know what you did last summer and oh my goodness I'm sure some people love it and are going to be really upset with me right now but I like the setup of it I like the suspense I hadn't watched the movie so I really didn't know what they did last summer at first and I didn't know who was behind it. So there was a good mystery at the beginning. I have this issue in YA horror that I've run into a couple times where even when people are dying, the characters are more concerned about their love interests than their friends. So when they're getting death threats, half of the book was like, oh, I hope this girl likes me. Oh, do you think she's getting back together with her ex-boyfriend? And I just didn't care. I wanted someone to die. A lot of the suspense is supposed to come from worrying about the characters, and I just wanted them all to get slashed down. I didn't think it would be a five-star amazing read for me, but I didn't think I'd react so badly to it. And often if I don't like a book, I just put it down or DNF it, as you say, but... Because it was so short, I just ended up finishing it before I could decide, so it just happened. So that's my ranty story. Do you have any disappointments? Um, a few. Well, I I read uh, The Blackstone Chronicles by John Saul in preparation for Asylum Horror, and it's a big book. It reads really fast, though, and that was my first John Saul book I ever read, so I'm a, I don't know, I have a bit of trepidation, like, picking up any other titles by him and I own like three of his other books wow yeah I did not care for it I just could not stand it (laughs) yeah I haven't read anything by him yet it's one of those like vintagey you know horror authors yeah he's a big name for sure yeah but my two like worst reads of the year are horror books by men in the 80s so I'm not like too excited to dive into that at the moment (laughs) 
I think that should be your next Books in the Freezer episode topic. Let's do horror from old men in the 80s. It'll just be like Stephen King. I'm like, he has, like, his work has good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's a lot that doesn't hold up so well. Yeah. Well, that's why, like, I didn't want to pick up Carrie, because I'm like, I just don't see, like, women being written well in this book. Mm-hmm. Was that one of your issues with it? Yeah, I don't always love how he writes women, especially because that book is all about a coming of age story. I didn't like it too much. So maybe let's talk about some of the books we're excited for later in the year. Um, Well, I have pre-ordered Paul Tremblay's Growing Things and other stories. That should be coming out soon. I don't actually know when this is going up, so it might already be out. (laughs) And I might already have it. But at this point in time, I do not. That's... Definitely one you want to check out. I'm going to check it out too. I think I'll get it from the library just because I haven't been as into short stories as I have in past years. One that goes all the way to December, but I'm really excited for The Dead Girls Club by Damien Angelica Walters. Have you heard about that one? Um, I know the author, but I didn't know about this. You have to check out the cover. is absolutely gorgeous. It's a bit more of like a horror slash thriller, but... I know it's about like a group of girls, kind of a coming of age horror story. And I just read her short story collection, Cry Your Way Home, even though I just said that I don't read a lot of short stories these days, but that was so good. And I just want to read more by her. I think she has some serious favorite potential for me as an author. And I'm just, yeah, really looking forward to that one, but that's not until December, which is so frustratingly far away. So I got a ways to wait for that. I've also heard that Joe Hill has a new short story collection coming out full throttle which I'm hoping to get my hands on and yeah very much looking forward to that I consider him one of my favorite horror authors so I have high hopes for that one being really fantastic um I'm also looking forward to Teeth in the Mist by Don Kurtigage I've read her two well two of her other books I don't know if that's all she's written but I really enjoyed them um The Dead House and and the trees crept in yeah that one should be coming out really shortly as we're recording this i also want to read the haunted by daniel vega who of course wrote the merciless which i gushed about so many times on the podcast it's coming out beginning of july and i'm just dying to get my hands on it i wasn't able to get a review copy so i'm gonna have to wait like everyone else (laughs) i'm number whatever on the library hold list and i'm just dying to check it out so that one's gonna be a lot of fun i think that could be a new favorite i'm hoping because i really like the merciless Ooh, one that won't be coming out till 2020 but i'm really excited for is the deep by Almakatsu. yes you just did that cover reveal yeah. and it's so frustrating on a podcast because we can't show anything in the actual recording but it is a gorgeous cover oh man i am so excited about it yeah um well i follow her on twitter and i know she she posted a few tweets about doing research on the Titanic for her next novel and I was immediately excited since then. Oh and I am too. I admitted that I didn't know much about the Donner Party Mm -hmm. which is why I I didn't actually read her first book but you know me I really like the Titanic. I love ocean stories. I love anything to do with the water. If I can drown I'm terrified etc. And I mean, we've even talked about it. Like I threw up when I watched the Titanic because when everyone started drowning, I got sick to my stomach because I almost see that movie as like a horror movie because people dying in those situations, drowning is one of the most horrifying situations out there. So that one I am dying to check out. I think it's going to be really good. Oh my gosh, I cry every time I watch the Titanic. Oh, it just scares me. I don't watch it. Like, it gives me anxiety. I really don't watch it. <laughs> we watched part of it in one of my classes, and I got special permission to leave and be in the library. Oh, my God. I was listening to a podcast, um, like a movie podcast, and they were just recapping scenes from the movie, and I started crying at work. I'm like, what's <laughs> wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Are you a series reader? Well, I guess, yeah, you read sci-fi series. Yes and No. Because, like you said, I read more science fiction and a little bit of fantasy now. I am more reading series than I used to be. But for the most part, I do prefer standalones. I'm someone who often will start a series, read the first book. And even if I like it, I don't necessarily keep going with a series. And horror doesn't have that many series in it. So 
it's a yes or no. I, oh, I did read The Hungry Ones by Chris Sorensen this year, which is the follow-up to The Nightmare Room, which I talked about last year and really liked. And that was really good. So I do have exceptions where I do read sequels in horror. And then, of course, in August, we're planning on reading Kill River 2 for part of our Bloody Beach read-along that we're doing on YouTube. So that should be a lot of fun. I like remember in that video, I also thought I don't read series and I've gotten into a lot of series. So again, who am I? <laughs> Yeah, really? So obviously you're reading the Wayward Children series and the Becky Chambers, the Wayfarer books. I just finished the second one. Okay, this one is probably the most random, but I recently started reading the Longmire books. <laughs> what are those? I'm drawing a blank. I'm um, like the Netflix series Longmire about the sheriff in Wyoming. <laughs> I didn't know that was based off a book series. Yeah. So I've been reading those and I'm like, I am an old man. These are like <laughs> old man books. Oh, that's hilarious. But I really like them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever you like. Those, let me see what else. Well, the the Miriam Black books, the Blackbirds by Chuck Wendig, that's a series. So I'm currently on the third one. My library doesn't have it, but it has all the other ones except the third. So I'm going to have to find a digital copy somewhere. Oh, that's so frustrating. Yeah, there's six books. How do you not have the third one? They have multiple editions and you know, digital and physical copies of all of the other ones, but the third one? <laughs> yeah, that bothers me. <laughs> the organized side of my brain is like twitching right now. <laughs> I'm just like, how? How is this possible that you don't? So yeah, just a few of those. I was going to say, have you read any uh, more indie stuff on Kindle Unlimited? When I haven't actually gotten another month of Kindle Unlimited in a while. I'm due to do that probably this summer, like this coming month I think I'll pick up a month because we've talked about it where basically I keep track of all the books I can read on Kindle Unlimited then I get a month subscription I binge read as much as I can I try not to read anything else mm -hmm. and then I cancel my subscription because I'm so cheap and have no money for books right now so that's the plan I haven't actually done that in a while so nothing new that way but I've been lucky enough to get some advanced reader copies from different authors so like I mentioned I got to read Chris Sorensen's book I got to read Cameron Rubik's Golf Curse which is of course a slasher about a golf course and the guys that do the maintenance on that so that was a lot of fun I just got a book I believe it's called Winter Tide Omega by Paul Roberts which is such a Rachel book it's basically a book set in Canada because he's a Canadian author and it's a survival story set in the winter. And it just sounds exactly like the kind of book I would enjoy. So I think that would be really perfect for if you guys do like a winter horror episode again this year. Ooh. So I might need to pop in for that one because I have a lot of <laughs> wrecks. Of course, it's the middle of summer, but that's what I'm planning on reading hopefully next. So I've definitely got to check out some. And I still really enjoy everything I've been reading in terms of indie. There's so much good stuff out there. But yeah, I'm long overdue for a Kindle Unlimited subscription because there's a lot of authors like Keelan Patrick Burke and I want to read more Chad Lutsky and a lot of them are, you know, on Kindle Unlimited. So I just need to kind of bite the bullet and, you know, spend $10 because of course I don't think anything of like going out for coffee and whatever, but <laughs> I should probably just put my money where, where, <laughs> where my reading is. I gotcha. Yeah, there's so much stuff on there. I'm constantly curating a list of like what to read next on Kindle Unlimited and switching out because I think you can have like, is it five or 10 items out at a time? I'm like, oh, yeah, always. I always run into that maximum whenever I'm doing it. And then I'm like, wait, which one do I want to return? Okay. <laughs> and of course, you can still like check it right back yeah. out. <laughs> I don't know why they have that. Oh, I just picked up one that I absolutely loved. It was called Odd Adventures with Your Other Father by Norman Prentice. Mm -hmm. And it literally made me cry. <laughs> like I was reading oh. it on my phone in bed and like <laughs> wiping tears away and sniffling. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about a, a father and he's addressing these letters to his daughter and his uh, partner, her other father, had died a bit ago. So he's writing these letters and letting her know about the summer after they graduated college when they took this road trip together and like letting her know what kind of man his father was. And they got into these supernatural kind of adventures in different small towns. And 
It was very interesting because there was supernatural elements, but a lot of the time, you know, the the real scary part was the homophobia that they ran into. And it was just like so good. It was like a seamless insertion of supernatural elements into these little vignettes. And it had this like touching element that made me cry. So (laughs) I just like absolutely loved it. Oh, that sounds so good. And like sniffling in my bed at one o'clock in the morning. (laughs) That's so nice. Yeah, I don't think I ever cry at books. I really am a robot. (laughs) Even with stirring the sheets, like I... I cried on that one for sure. (laughs) Did you? (laughs) I was wondering. I was able to appreciate how sad and bittersweet it was. But yeah, I don't shed a tear for pretty much anything. I think every time we go to a movie... There's a point where my husband always looks over to check if I am crying and I am 100% of the time always crying. Uh, (laughs) Like we went went to go see Avengers Endgame and I took out my like emergency pack of tissues like 10 minutes in. My husband's like, oh my gosh. (laughs) Oh my gosh, it's a superhero movie. I haven't seen it yet, but. (laughs) Oh man. Uh, Well, that leads in well, I guess I wanted to ask you horror movies coming up. Are there any that are. Go on. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, Midsummer. Well, again, I don't know when this is going to come out, so Midsummer might be out by now. At this point, it is not, but I am so excited to go see it. Jesse will not go see it with me, so I'm just going to have to wait for him to come home from work and be like, cool, I'm going to go watch this by myself. Bye. Well, we already talked about it before the podcast started, but I really want to go see Child's Play, like the new Chucky movie that's produced by the people who made it. Mm -hmm. It just looks like the kind of movie I'd really enjoy. I haven't actually seen the original. I do want to check it out, see if my library maybe has the DVD or something. I have such a thing for creepy doll stories, and I don't know, it actually is getting pretty good reviews, which is surprising everyone online. Yeah, I did see that, that people were saying it was a lot of fun. Um, I know there's like the controversy of it that there's like two different Chucky movies coming out. Like I am not the person to be talking about this because like I don't have any connection to the original, but it's out there. Like this is where I wish Devin was here because he could be like, actually, (laughs) let me set this whole thing straight. Here's what's going on. (laughs) Yeah, I've got to say the other side of your conversation has gotten a lot more educated in the way of movies because when it was me talking about the different topics and we'd always lead into movies that fit with the books that we were discussing in the episode it was always the same that you would list a bunch of movies and I would say haven't watched it haven't watched it haven't watched it so it's really nice to have Devin there who can talk about Alien and all of these different movies that fit with the topic and have actually watched them because you're pretty good you've actually watched quite a bit of different horror but I'm still working my way through a lot of the horror movies that I should have watched as a teenager and so forth and there's a lot of catch-up I have to do which always shows through in those episodes oh I feel that way with Devin though like he'll be like you've seen this one right I'm like well (laughs) (laughs) I suppose I guess there's always someone who's watched more than whoever yeah well it's one of those things like when I'm scrolling through Shudder like I want to watch the cool new stuff I don't want to necessarily feel like I'm doing homework and watching something I should have watched if that makes any sense I'm like no I want to see the cool new movie everyone's talking about I don't want to like fill in my cultural gaps <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh I know and right now like tv time is always like something I do with my husband and we've discussed it that you know it doesn't usually end up being a horror movie I'm always trying to nudge him into it right now we're watching like Star Trek again like not horror at all <laughs> I try. I try so hard. Oh, man. Yeah, we're uh, finishing up The Sopranos. I know Jesse and I do not agree on a lot of stuff when it comes to (laughs) movies or television. So we do best when we can decide on a long running TV show that we can watch together. That is our best bet. (laughs) Because yeah, we do not do, yeah, way. we do not do well deciding on a movie. We will go in circles. We will go over four different streaming platforms and just end up in frustration. <laughs> yeah, and when in doubt, you just start rewatching The Office. Exactly, you can never go wrong with that. Oh man, yeah, it's always me <laughs> suggesting horror titles and him saying no and suggesting like, dumb comedies that I don't want to watch. And I love comedies, <laughs> but there's just some I do not have any <laughs> desire to watch. <laughs> Or like you can documentaries. Do what I do. Documentaries too. Do I'm like, I don't want to watch a documentary. <laughs> oh, my Jesse's the same way. We really should get them together. Like 
Oh, I'm trying to think what we were watching. It was like a documentary on like the drug trade and then, oh, they're, some of them are so dry. Like the drug trade one wasn't too bad, but I don't know. What, you could try what I try sometimes with Jesse where I don't actually tell him what the movie is about. Like there's this, I think it's Korean movie that is about a zombie outbreak on a train. The train to uh, Busan. Yeah, and I really want to watch it. So I put it on our like watch list and Jesse's like, what's that? I'm like, oh, it's about a trains and so i'm just hoping that he'll watch it and then like part way through the zombies will come out and he'll just already be into the movie that's that's my plan at least <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's tough well i made him watch scream <laughs> a few oh. weeks ago and he hated it like absolutely what? that's one of my favorites he was like this is the <sighs> stupidest movie <laughs> i've ever oh. seen I mean, it's aged a little bit, but it's, I think it's fun. I do too. Oh, I'm so I don't sad think, right now. I don't think we have the same definition of fun, uh, yeah. Jesse and I. <laughs> but I was like explaining, I'm like, you don't understand the landscape of slasher movies up until this point in history and how important it was. And I'm like, <laughs> it was really important because, you know, Sydney's the final girl, but she has sex and she actually like physically fights the attacker. And I'm like going through all these things. And he's like, I don't, none of those things matter to me at all. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> and a lot of the stuff is played for laughs, I think. A lot of the, like, scarier scenes and the confrontations. Like, you know, Ghostface is, like, constantly getting hit or, like, falling down. And Jesse could not take it seriously. Oh, yeah. And he's like, why is he wearing that ridiculous cloak? It's just a stupid what? fashion choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah. <laughs> So nothing's changed on the husband's getting into horror friend is what I'm hearing. He did like Hereditary. That's good to know. That's one I've been wanting to read. I think it's coming to Canadian Netflix. It might actually be on there already. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime here. So yeah, he did like that. It actually scared him. Oh, that's good. And does he like getting scared? Is that his criteria? Because maybe he just can't do horror comedies, like anything that's too meta or self-aware. Yeah, well, he was scared. I think at one point he yelled at me, why do you like feeling like this? <laughs> it's like yeah that you purposely put yourself through that yeah (laughs) so yeah the um oh it chapter two coming out in september right yes yeah have you seen the trailer i'm sure you have it looks so good so yeah i'm really excited to see it i think they did a really good job at casting and the trailer yeah is amazing oh I think it looks so good. I'm dying. That is one where I've already kind of prearranged babysitting that I'm telling my mom that she has to take care of him for a little bit. And we have friends that went to go see the first uh, It movie with us. Mm-hmm. So they're going to go and watch it too. So really looking forward to that. I was talking to you before, but like getting babysitters when you have a little one is like so precious. Like they, you know, people only want to babysit so much. So you kind of have to choose your time wisely. And I pretty much only want to use like babysitting time for like horror related activities and (laughs) things like that. So I got my priorities straight. Like my mom keeps offering. She's like, oh, you go and like get a manicure and then, you know, and do your thing and then I'll watch him. I was like, I'd rather you watch him so I can like record like a podcast episode. She's like, "Mm, you should go get a manicure. So maybe I should just like go pretend to get a manicure, come back with like terrible, like done nails that I did myself. Yeah. Like go get one of those private rooms at the library and just bring your laptop. Exactly. (laughs) Paint your nails while recording an episode. There you go. So I might do that because yeah, it's funny what people want to like tell you what to do with your free time but it's like all I want to do is like go and watch like horror movies and talk horror books and I'm happy to say that yeah nothing's really changed since you last talked to me. Glad to know motherhood has not changed you. No I took inspiration from you (laughs) so definitely before recording this we were sitting on the couch uh reading a horror book together called Dust by Dust. There's a couple things I kind of had to censor out because I'm like I don't know when he's gonna start picking up stuff but (laughs) That's that's how we spend our time. We both read uh, Pet Cemetery together as an audiobook, so that was fun. Nice, nice. It's like when I read uh, The Shining to Henry while I was pregnant with him. I was always thinking about that, and yeah, I definitely got some inspiration from you. Because, you know, they just like to hear your voice. Yeah. So at this point, you know. That's what the study said, yeah. Yeah, like they didn't specify what you're supposed to be talking to them about. So I just read aloud and... He seems to enjoy it. He put him to sleep this morning, so it worked for me. All right. Well, it 
sounds like baby shades of orange needs your attention he's a little fussy so we might need to cut it here but i'm definitely glad we were able to set this up so i could chat with kind of fill everyone in on you know what i've been reading lately oh well it was really good chatting with you so thanks for hopping on yeah it'll be great to hear you guys uh soon with the next episode i can't wait to hear what you guys have been reading